Welcome to the lesson one of Every Media Composer. It's very important to understand the interface of how the software looks like. Now, there are a lot of things common as compared if you've worked in other softwares, for example, be it Premiere Pro or be it Final Cut Pro. But where Media Composer really differs is the way it works with files. And understanding the file system is very important. What happens when you bring a file and what happens to the file inside Media Composer and how Media Composer manages the file is something very, very different that you would have experienced until so far. In this lesson, we'll learn how to launch Media Composer. We'll also learn how to look at the, look at the project window. And I'll keep comparing your experiences with other softwares as well. Understanding bins, because it is a little different if you have worked with bins as compared to, say, for example, Premiere Pro. And also, it has also a system of creating your own profile. So if you are working in an organization where you have multiple editors, and you are one of the editors, then you can pretty much define your own profile, and all the settings will be saved on that particular profile. And then, then we can get into how we can personalize the application, because uh, you know, after all, that's a window that you'll be looking at for a good part of your life. So I always want to make it look like something that I'm more used to looking at. Every media composer comes with its own screen, own color. You can customize everything. And that's what, how we're going to end this particular lesson with. So keep referring to uh, the certain, certain key elements that I would have discussed in between uh, this particular lesson. And I'll also refer to the books that you have been issued uh, because those small information becomes a very important key during the exam. So when you launch Media Composer, this is the first uh, screen that you get. It is asking us to actually select a project, uh, which is very common with other softwares as well. Let me quickly explain what this window actually means. The first option is called User Profile. You can actually create your own user profile. It's al also great because you can actually create a user profile and you can actually save all the settings, which includes how the interface looks like. Um, there's a lot of options within each, each uh, profile. And you can actually uh, send it to yourself over email, carry it in a USB stick. So wherever you go, actually, uh, if you're working in somebody else's uh, system, you can actually pretty much feel at home because all the settings will be according to your need. So it's always great to create a new uh, profile. I'll show you once we come there. Uh, you have these three options, uh, which actually tells you, uh, allows you to choose the location. So there are three locations that Avid allows you to work from. One is private, which is your local drive. In your local drive, you can save your projects. Similarly, if you're working with multiple editors, you can also choose to work in a shared, uh, shared folder, which Avid allows you. But most commonly, uh, like, like you and me, uh, I think we'll be mostly using our external drive, uh, since um, it's always better to work from an external drive uh, to uh, save your computer by being under too much pressure to handle the projects and the media at the same time. I uh, always um, prefer people to work from the external drives. So here also you can actually create a folder and you can store all your projects. So this is what I have chosen for myself. And then this is the project that I'm going to open now. But before that, quickly let me like go through the new project window. This new project window actually allows you to choose a project from scratch. Uh, there are different formats available if you're using different versions of uh, media composer like the free one then certain options might not be here you can also create a custom uh, uh, frame size for yourself if you want but one thing you should know and remember is that whenever you choose any of these options you cannot choose and change the frame rate so if you can see here that the frame rate say for example i choose 720 by 25 frames per second you can see everything is changeable except the frame rate. So please remember this limitation. Now I've already created a project, so I'm gonna look, click on the project. This is a project that we're gonna be using across uh, this particular tutorial. Uh, so um, make sure that you have taken a copy and stored it into your external drive. And uh, if you have chosen the project folder itself, then you will get this project file for sure. Once I open Media Composer, then this is how the window uh, populates itself. So let me first tell you what each window is called. So the first window that you see on your right hand side is your Composer window. This is your project window, this is your bin window, and this is your timeline. 
the bin window for example okay is uh, this is the project file dialog editing right if i close this bin okay which is this one for example then the project will close please remember that so everything that is connected to this particular bin like for example let me show you a demonstration sequence if i close the sequence you'll see the sequence will go from here and the and you, how do you know a bin is open or closed you can see that the that the icon changes so whenever it is open it becomes white yeah so now i can double click on the sequence and the sequence will come back here all right so composer window project window bin window and timeline window the thing that you should definitely understand and and uh, get familiarized with is the track panel now as you can see in this track panel there are one video track and two audio tracks now this track panel this this buttons are called record track buttons okay these buttons are called record track buttons if you by any chance do not see your timeline you can always go to tools and choose timeline the timeline will show up similarly if you want the most default version of the way the windows look like then you can go to windows workspace and choose source record editing this is the default view so if you want to go back to the default window you can actually go to windows go to workspace and choose restore current to default this will actually make the current window look like the way it should look let me just show you that's how it looks there's a new edition called source browser uh, don't be intimidated by this window it's a very simple window actually very helpful window now it's a great addition to media composer you can actually go and choose your files as i mentioned that my footage is lying inside a external hard drive so this is my folder i can go to uh, media and i can go to uh, this one video editing lesson exercise files and uh, i can choose a particular folder from here now if i want to select and bring all the all the files into my project i can just click and control a select all the files and i get two options link will actually create a link to the file it will not transcode the file on the other hand if i choose import it will actually import as per a specific codec that you can specify right here this is a little advanced when we talk about importing files and learning how to import files we'll go through this window again but let me just go back to the window i am used to working with which is this one all right now here basically is your timeline window so if you look into your project window if you take in all the windows there is a fast menu now there are so many options in media composer for each specific uh, action that they ran out of space if you look at any particular clip for example let me look let me open uh, dialog Right. now I can just merge it together now you can see if I click on a particular clip and right click there's so many options okay for every single thing there are different options in timeline there are different options in composer different options so if you want to access these options for each one of these windows okay what media composer has done they've actually incorporated a fast menu what I call as a hamburger menu you can look at this menu right here and click on it and whatever is action is associated with this particular window that option will show up that's a very good addition to uh, media composer and you can find this particular tool this button in each of the windows let me show you the in timeline right in the bottom you can see it's here in the bin window it's in the bottom right here okay so these options are available for each window that media composer opens now let's learn a little bit further about about the bins okay now let's drag this out and let's make it bigger so we can see what this window has now you can see there's so many options that you can see for each clip okay there are three views all right and the three views are text view this is your text view in media composer it's called text view this is your frame view okay it actually shows you all the clips visually so in this one if you want to actually increase the size of the thumbnails uh, the shortcut is command L okay and as you can see it is right now making it bigger all right and you can right click it and you can choose fill sorted and what it will do it will arrange the thumbnails as per the present window 
it's a great way to actually look at your footage. You can click on it and you can actually press space bar and it will start playing. Yeah, so that's not bad. And in fact, um, you can do that for all the all the um, all the clips here. So this is your frame view. The other option is available is called the script view. Now this is a great way to actually add comments. So you can watch something here and you can add your comment. And uh, not only that, you can also search this comment later. We'll talk about it later in more detail. Let me just show you how you can create a user profile now. Now you remember I mentioned about user profile in the beginning. Uh, you can actually have a look at your user profile right here if you go to settings if you go to settings you will find uh, the profiles here I can choose a profile okay and it will automatically change uh, the way I like to see uh, my settings okay these are my settings so in my profile you see I also have a favorite bin which I'll talk about it later okay so you can create a new profile by just simply going to settings clicking on this and create a user profile okay if you click on this you can just have to give a name okay and you can create a profile for yourself this creates a folder in the computer which you can carry with you which I mentioned earlier and as I as I showed you earlier as well you can personalize the way you can arrange the windows for example if I like to like you know um, bring say for example the audio tool all right and I want to keep it somewhere close by so that I can always have a look at it whenever I'm working you know so you can actually rearrange the space okay and you can yeah so say for example this is the way I this is the way I want to work for example from now I want to see the audio levels okay so if you want to save this workspace it's very simple go to window go to workspace and you can actually create new workspace and I can call it audio tool basic so what will happen that this workspace will be saved and if I want to go back to for example the source record editing workspace okay it will change all right and if I if I want to go back to the audio tool workspace I created you will see it will come here and you know this will come back so you can personalize the way the the entire window arrangement works within media composer very very helpful okay if you want if you make any changes uh, at any point for example say for example I made this smaller for some reason you know um, or I'm just wanted a little bigger and I want to just keep it like this because I want to just go through all the all the videos at once through the frame view for example then I can actually change this by going to window workspace and save current so what will happen that whatever changes you make it will get saved uh, the another great way of working with media composer is actually how you can which i already showed you actually how you can actually combine bins so if i so i have a sequence bin as well so if i double click it it opens in its own window okay so what i can do is that i can just drag it to another window okay now see how how i have dragged it i have clicked on this tab and i dragged it and dropped it here and both of them are combined in fact if you have suppose 100 bins in the same arrangement you can click on this window and you can choose one particular bin and it will show up okay so it's very easy to switch between windows by using this button as well another very interesting um, uh, uh, option that uh, media composer offers you is actually uh, the whole idea of uh, changing the setting now that, that's, that's the reason why you create a user setting to begin with so if I am, am in my uh, setting for altogether and I want to change the way the interface looks like okay I find this very dull and boring for example then just keep keep looking at this window you will you'll see an option called interface now in interface you can see there's a tick and you can see there's a user so these are all user setting which we can change okay the way to change it and the safest way to do it is actually you can click on it and right click and make it duplicate okay and in this duplicate you can actually give it a particular name so I can call it Saber default look all right now I can double click on this okay and change the way the interface looks like so how to make it more darker okay like really dark all right I want to change the highlight color to, to yellow all right and um, I want a timeline background to be a little shade of gray 
okay and project background to be completely white okay everything else is fine okay so labels in tool palette and I apply okay so this is how my new interface looks like do I like it I don't know I think it's okay it is bearable <laughs> if I click on the bin view it is much more lighter okay uh, so let me see the sequence view also and let me see the sequence looks sequence looks very different okay so maybe it's a little darker uh, you know I mean uh, in terms of uh, so I can make it a little lighter so as, so as you can see wherever you decide to put this arrow the stick it will switch back to uh, that particular interface all right so this is the interface that I have just changed okay and li likewise there are other options here as well uh, you can explore this at your own time there are all the user setting you see can be duplicated can be changed and made to work the way you like to work actually all right so that's basically how working with changing interface colors are concerned one of the most powerful tools that media composer provides you is actually using the command palette and you will find command palette right here the shortcut is command 3 if you open command palette you get three options all right now this is possibly all the options that you can use ever in media composer all the tools everything that you can do in media composer is actually stored inside this window there's something called button to button reassignment now you can see that in media composer right here in my composer window there's some empty buttons i can actually go to any tools here all right and say for example let me go to fx tool or trim tool all right um, you can choose any tool here and you can just drag and drop it into an empty button and as you can see i have already assigned this particular tool into an empty button here so that said it becomes very easy for you to actually control the button assignment by using a command palette yeah I can drag and drop it and change it to blank other option is active palette which is great because this will actually make each of the buttons work so say for example let me go back to my dialog let me open a particular file here if I press play here it will play okay if I play if I stop it it will stop all right so you can actually use the command palette pretty much to actually work using these buttons as well the other thing is that you can actually assign a button to a menu okay if you click this and you choose a particular button which is now it's a free it's an open button now it's a blank button now I can go to a tool and I can choose effect editor and you can see it will, it will be assigned here so this is also helps you to place tools and options for the menu to a button in your window so those are the three options that you find the other thing also you can do is actually you can actually pretty much change the way keyboard is assigned so if you if you you can open your keyboard from your setting options here so you scroll down and you go to keyboard and you go to keyboard here so here also I have actually created my own keyboard as you can see I can double click this keyboard and all your modifiers are available in when you press your shift button okay you can see these are all my modifiers all right uh, as you can clearly see the text color needs to change because I can hardly see them but I can definitely see the buttons here <coughs> so you can actually assign your keyboards keyboards uh, keyboard setting from the command palette as well okay so it's very very simple uh, for example if I press shift and I can see what, what all things are what all things are available here what all things are empty here I can see there are a lot of empty options okay so suppose if I want any particular option from the command palette so let me go to edit and let me look at something like um, added it okay so I can just drag this added it and put it say for example to shift J all right so I can press I can now actually use J shift J to add any kind of edit okay which is great because this allows you the flexibility to work and assign buttons according to your wishes the way you like to work so that becomes very helpful so both the command palette and your uh, both the command palette and the keyboard you can actually work together and make sure that you have a very robust way of working 
by selecting an option and, and then choosing an option as per your wish. So that's basically your command palette. So uh, let me just quickly go through what we have covered uh, so far. Um, uh, we have learned how to launch Media Composer. We have learned how the interface looks like, the project window, particularly when you open the Media Composer, how the project window, different settings it allows you, it gives you. Um, then we learn the interface, the composer window, the timeline window, the project window, the bin window, and we learn what's inside those windows as well. Uh, one thing that you need to remember, as I mentioned, for your exam point of view, is uh, how the bin window works. Uh, what are the different options available inside the bin window? Particularly, I spoke about the fast menu or the or the hamburger menu. Uh, then how different layouts of bins, which is basically text view, frame view, and your script view. These names are important because in exam we'll ask you for the specific names. So I repeat frame view, text view and script view. And then I also learned how we can change a particular user profile, create a new user profile, personalize the application by going to settings and going to different user settings. Uh, we went through interface and then we went through keyboard. Uh, uh, also, we learn how to combine windows using tabs. Uh, that's very helpful. If you have multiple windows, you can use uh, this particular window to jump between bins. And then we also learn how to, um, using interface settings to change the color, to change the look of the application. We learned command palette and how we can map, uh, map buttons. I again repeat, your command palette has got three options. You have button to button reassignment which, which which allows you to actually change buttons of your interface using command palette active palette you can actually run the buttons from command palette and work within the application menu to button is that you can choose a button and you can actually go to a menu and choose a particular option to drop it into your menu uh, so very very simple all of this we have already covered so far and i finally end this particular session by talking about auto save settings so auto save settings are again very very important because the, based on the way you work. So if you go to your um, project window and uh, and you look at uh, settings, you'll find auto save. Okay, and you will find this in bin settings. So if you double click bin settings, you can actually get an auto save option right here. So this right now the auto save interval is 15 minutes, which is very very long. I would like to change it to five. And inactivity period is 15 seconds. That is fine. Okay, and then you have force auto save. You can actually force auto save every 10 minutes. Okay, this all depends upon how fast you work. So if you work faster, then you should definitely change the setting as per your um, uh, convenience. Okay, so um, that's pretty much how you uh, change the auto save options, and you can click OK, and this will be saved. So that's all from me in the lesson number one. Um, please practice this well. Uh, go through each of the options that I went and explained. Uh, I'm just following the book so that we follow in line and we learn according to the book so we prepare for the exam accordingly. Thank you so much.